We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, in your infinite love, you made us, and you know our every need. Because of our need, you have ordained times and seasons set aside for your worship and for our good. Bless our observance of this Ash Wednesday and of this season of Lent. Lead us by your word and your spirit to a knowledge of our sin and your grace, to acts of our repentance and your recreation, to a future of our good and your glory. Amen. As we begin our Lenten journey, we focus our attention on various witnesses to Christ in John's Gospel. We begin with John the Baptist, a man on a mission. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. John the Baptist's mission is to bear witness about the light. In fact, 14 times in John's Gospel, The word witness is connected with John the Baptist. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into our world. John points us to Jesus, who takes away our sin, our guilt, and our shame at the cross. A reading from Psalm chapter 51. Have mercy in your goodness, Lord, and in your grace forgive my sin. Wash me from evil through and through. Cleanse me, O Lord, without and within. All my transgressions, Lord, I know. I see my sin both day and night. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. When you speak, O Lord, it is just. Your judgments all reveal the truth. I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner even from my youth. For deep within you look for truth. In secret you make me understand. Purge out my sin and I shall be pure as your holy law demands. Tell me of joy and gladness, Lord, and give my broken body ease. Lord, hide your face from all my sin. Blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Renew a spirit that is right. Take not your spirit from my life, nor cast me out, Lord, from your sight. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading comes from John Chapter 1, verses 29 to 34. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave his testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tattoo parlors need a sign over their entrance that announces, Think Before You Ink. They should place a recording in the background that says, Do you really want to carry your girlfriend's name on your shoulder for the rest of your life? Tattoo removal has become big business. More and more tattoo-bearing people experience what's called tattoo regret syndrome. According to a Harris Poll survey, the number of Americans with tattoos and those considering tattoo removal is on the rise. And it's not cheap. To remove a single tattoo can take up to 12 sessions, 
spaced out over a course of two years, and each treatment can cost between $100 and $400. If our regrets showed up as tattoos, how marked up would we be? What pictures would we see in the mirror, the face of someone we hurt, the amount of money we wasted, all the couldas and shouldas, I could have been a better dad, I, I should have paid closer attention, I could have been a better student. Dig around in the basement of your life and what do you find? Wasted years, obsessive greed, destructive diversions, anger, arrogance, selfishness, racial slurs. What can we do with all our unwanted marks? We can be defensive. When we're defensive, we don't admit anything. We tell no one. We keep the skeleton safely locked up in the closet. We seek innocence, not forgiveness. When we're defensive, we reduce life to one goal, hide the secret, cover it up. Don't address it, don't admit it, and whatever we do, never ever confess it. When we see marks of regret, another option is to be defeated. When we're defeated, we feel as though we don't make mistakes. We are a mistake. We don't foul up, we are a foul up. We beat ourselves up repeatedly with blame and shame. We take the role of judge, jury, and accusing attorney. The verdict? Guilty forever. Defensive people hide marks. Defeated people replay marks. Is there a better way? You bet there is. We can be delivered from all our ugly marks. As we begin Lent on this Ash Wednesday, we also begin a sermon series called Witnesses to Christ. And the first person who helps us to follow Christ to the cross in John's gospel is John, John the Baptist. What does John the Baptist say when we're defensive about our sin or defeated by our sin? Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, John 1, When it comes to all our ugly marks of sin, we can be delivered. Behold, behold literally means to see. The verb can be translated look, gaze, stare, take note. Behold means here is the whole point of what I'm saying. John the Baptist says it again in John 1, 36. Behold, in both verses, John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God. This isn't an ordinary Lamb of God. This is the Passover Lamb of God. John uses the word Passover 11 times in his gospel. 11 times. The entire gospel is structured to help us behold, see, gaze, and take note of Christ, the Passover lamb of God. Exodus 12, 5 says that the Passover lamb is to be a male lamb, perfect, spotless, without defect. Exodus 12, 7 says that Israelites are to place the Passover lamb's blood on the sides of the, and the tops of their door frames. This blood would set the Israelites free, free from bricks, free from whips, free from Pharaoh's countless bags of tricks. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The verb takes away is present tense, meaning what? Meaning that Christ still takes away. Today, he takes away. Tomorrow, he takes away. Next week, he takes away. What does he take away? He takes away the sin of of the world. And that includes our sin, our ugly sin, our shameful sin, our haunting sin, our every single sin. He takes it all away. Christ not only takes away our guilt, that sin done by us, Christ also takes away our shame, that sin done to us. Guilt is what we feel when we've done wrong. Shame is what we feel when someone has wronged us. We all know what public shame feels like. Branded by a divorce, marked up, marked by handicap, saddled with alcoholic parents, crushed because of a child's arrest, or we feel stigmatized because we lost our job, we lost our spouse, we lost our house, we lost our life savings, and now everyone knows. There's also private shame. We've all felt that too. 
Maybe you've been pushed to the edge by an abusive spouse, molested by a perverted parent, seduced by a sneaky superior, or teased without mercy by other kids. No one else knows, but we know, and that's enough to bury us in shame. We put our hands over our ears. We splash water on our faces. We go for a long drive. Nothing takes away our shame. Nothing takes away our guilt. Sin has marked us, and that's that. End of story. No, it's not. We don't have to drink our sin away. We don't have to work our sin away, explain our sin away, eat our sin away, cry our sin away, or bury our sin away. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I know this may be hard to believe. Most of us have carried our ugly marks for so long that we can't imagine life without them. Maybe we can't imagine it, but God can, God does, and God does more than just imagine it. He sends John the Baptist who says, Behold, look, see, gaze. Here is the whole point of what I'm saying. The Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. The Passover Lamb of God does it all for the whole world. The Passover Lamb of God does it all for you. And so we pray this prayer. Jesus, please take it all away. Tell Jesus what you did. Tell Jesus what you said, what you saw, what you took, how you feel. Tell Jesus what you thought. Pray this prayer as often as needed, one time, two times, ten times a day. Hold nothing back. No guilt is too ancient or too recent. No shame is too evil or too insignificant. No marks are so malicious that they can't be completely removed. Jesus, please take it all away. We're tempted to say, Jesus, take it all away. I'm such a louse. But that doesn't work. For one thing, we're not a louse. We're God's baptized children, and he loves us. For another, marks are removed only when they are exposed to grace. What do you need grace for? For being a bad person? That's too general. For losing your patience at a meeting and calling your co-worker a creep? There. You can confess that. Confession isn't punishment for sin. Confession names sin. So it can be exposed to God's amazing grace. Be firm in this prayer. Satan traffics in guilt and shame. He won't give up without a fight. Say to Satan, I left my sin with the Passover Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It's time for a clean start, a fresh slate, a new beginning. That's what Lent is all about. We don't need to be defensive or defeated. Today, we can be delivered. And we do that by looking at God's marks. Yes, God has marks on His hands. Behold, behold, look, see, gaze. Here is the whole point of what I'm saying. I have engraved you On the palms of my hands, Isaiah 49, 16 says, Jesus has your name written there. He can see it. Your name is on his blood-stained hands. Yes, Jesus loves you that much. If you ever wondered how God reacts when guilt and shame have you cornered and are ready to swallow you whole, if you've ever wondered how God feels when you're lost, abandoned, and helpless, If you've ever wondered what God would do if he ever found out about it all, then frame these words and hang them on your wall. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Trust these words. Believe these words. Stand below these words and trust Jesus to take it all away. Jesus took the nails on the cross On a God-forsaken cross, Jesus took the nails, and taking the nails, Jesus takes away all our sins and shame. He hung there for us. Jesus still says, I have engraved you on the palms of my hand. And in the end, in the end, these are the only marks that matter. These marks on Christ's hands will never be erased, ever. Amen and amen. Please join me for a moment of confession as we come before our Lord 
and lay our sins before the cross. And I want to encourage you, you're watching this at home, I wanted so desperately for us to be together this Ash Wednesday service to, to hear this message of grace. Um, but you're in your home, maybe you're by yourself, wherever you are, I want you in this time of confession to name your sins. It could be in your heart you're naming them. And it could be out loud. Name these sins. Let them be uncovered. Not so that shame may abound, but that grace may cover these wounds once and for all. Please join me for confession. Gracious Heavenly Father, so often we are driven by guilt and shame into darkness, into despair, into, into uh, uh, humiliation, and that controls our life and our outlook. Too often we focus on what we can see in our hearts, the brokenness in our lives. Holy Spirit, turn our eyes to Jesus that we can declare with John the Baptist, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Hear us now as we come before you in a moment of silent confession. As we name our sins before you to receive your grace. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing our confession. Amen. I want to declare to you that the Lamb of God has taken away the sins of the world. Go in peace and joy knowing that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now receive with bowed heads and believing hearts the benediction of our Lord Jesus Christ. The benediction is God's blessing to go forth and be a blessing wherever you live, wherever, whoever you meet. Be a blessing to them, declaring, Behold, the Lamb of God has taken away the sin of the world. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen and amen.